fourth chapter. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The Gospel of the Lord. to live lives 
that are generous in word and deed. And so we believe that our weaving the nest includes serving those in need in the world around us. Because we believe when we do so, we are serving Jesus, the bringer of the kingdom. A new life center or station. The world is in need of new life centers, is it not? Dr. Seuss admitted that years ago in rhyme when he wrote, I have heard there are troubles of more than one kind. Some come from ahead and some from behind. And then in the Lorax, he suggested a solution when he wrote, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. The statistics tell us as well, don't they? Eight million worldwide die each year from cancer, a disease that affects every one of our families. Or domestic violence, the leading cause of injury to women in the U.S. ages 15 to 44, far outpacing injuries from auto accidents in that category. Or in our very region, tens of thousands go hungry at some point during the month due to poverty and food insecurity issues. The list could go on, but rather than just lament statistics, we are shaped by an empty tomb. And so we partner, we support other new life stations, other nesting areas, like Safe Harbor Homeless Shelter, a nest for those who have a nest to call their own. Or the Domestic Violence Center, helping women and children in the most dire times of their need. Or Gaudencia, providing for families trying to escape from chemical dependencies or addictions. Or the Care Center for Christ, or Chester County Food Bank, or the Chester County Maternal Consortium, or Salvation Army, or Interfaith Housing Agency, some big, some small, all nesting areas, places where new life can burst forth, a network of nests. Today is a preview of an event we are calling Community Service Saturday, planned for September 12th later this year. Our kickoff is today, however, and many of the agencies I just named are here downstairs in our fellowship hall. Some worship with us at the first service. And they'll share more of the story of what this event is all about as we seek to help new life burst forth in small ways. Now some may say, well, Jesus never formed any social service agency. And that's true. However, let's review what, was, what Jesus was up to prior to this point when he says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Up to this point in Mark's gospel, he's already been questioned and criticized by the religious leaders of his day for eating with tax collectors and welcoming sinners and touching lepers and healing on the Sabbath and declaring forgiveness to people and feeding the hungry in large quantities. Eating, healing, welcoming. Jesus was an on the move, new life station. Kevin Griswold, one of our young members, knows that the world needs new life nesting stations. Just last year, Kevin stood in front of the congregation affirming his faith as a part of our confirmation process. This summer, Kevin, along with a friend and classmate for their senior project, are working a former cleaning garden run by Chester County Food Bank and now staffed by Kevin, his friend, their families, their neighbors, and a local business partner. They've already provided meals through the Aid for Friends program and plan to continue to donate to the community garden as it produces throughout the summer. New life 
nesting stations. The partners are numerous. And I think the partners that we have right here in our music ministry, all of our music ministries, and especially was mindful of that as we celebrated the faithfulness of God for Drew Shuey, 43 years of serving, and, and in particular in that ministry, how she would take our little hatchlings, otherwise known as cherubs and junior choir members, she would nurture them and teach them songs of the faith and eventually send them story with a melody in their hearts, knowing the old story. And I couldn't help of our musicians and their ministry as I reviewed a news story that came out of Memphis, Tennessee, shared by Peg Hume. This local TV station was covering the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and their concert around the country as it came through Memphis. And in this feature, they focused not on the huge concert in the Grand Hall, but rather and focused over at St. Jude's Children's Hospital, where a 10-year-old little girl named Chase Birch had been treated for an aggressive form of brain cancer. Due to her chemotherapy, she can't be around crowds, and so she was not going to be able to attend the Mormon Tabernacle Choir's concert. The nurse on her floor called the Choir suggested maybe a few of the members could come and meet this young girl whose love for music was so great and lift your spirits. And so they arranged something. And when Chase Birch and her family walked into the hotel lobby where the family was staying during her treatments, they expected to meet a few members of the choir, but instead were greeted in that fast space by hundreds of people choir members, orchestra members, staff members, family and friends gathered in a semicircle, kept at a safe distance from her, almost looking like a nest. And then they surrounded this little girl with beautiful music as they sang the songs of faith to her and her younger sister and their parents as they plopped themselves down on the plush couches there in the hotel lobby. And the tears flowed down in abundance. Good tears. Tears of release and healing. Tears of surrender and joy. Tears of compassion and encouragement. And at one point, this little girl just bowed her head as if to say, thank you. And this is sacred. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that becomes a great shrub that shelters the birds. We might expect Jesus to compare it to us, a cedar or a giant sequoia. But Jesus finds the power of God better imagined in a tiny, no account seed. It's not how one expects divine activity to look. And again, the cross and empty tomb were not what the first followers expected either. But here is the tree of life, the true vine providing for all, a divine nesting station, a place where you will find protection and nourishment, growth and freedom, and a call to serve. No, the kingdom may not appear all that impressive. A little piece of bread, a tiny sip of wine, a little handwritten name on a sign-up sheet for a service project. But then when no one is looking, it grows. It grows with a power beyond our understanding or ability to explain, so that in the end, we bow our heads. Lost. Now, to who was able to accomplish abundantly beyond all we could ask or imagine, 